So there's a lot of confusion about how some of my arms work and specifically the metal one. And I know it's complicated because um, just from how many people in person and online have asked how the different ones work and that they don't all work in the same way. So I wanted to just in a, you know, a quick shot, I'm going to uh, mow the lawn and I wanted to take some time to explain before I put my arm on and switch my hands specifically how the metal one works because that one is, um, I think, uh, I've gotten so many messages from so many PTs asking about that arm and I've traveled abroad to talk about that arm because I think it's really special and it was made here in Texas by somebody who um, doesn't work in prosthetics and um, you know is an engineer who's just a metal specialist and uh, right, works primarily on like race cars and metal structures and you know everything from like airplanes, spaceships and stuff like that. And so um, I think that that's why he provided such a unique taste on prosthetics or brought such a unique taste to prosthetics, which is, uh, I always say function first. And um, this is the arm I'm talking about. I refer to it affectionately as the Havoc arm. And so it's all metal, right? But there's no sensors in it. So this one specifically, uh, why it gets complicated is because only one of my hands currently um, moves the elbow and I I have actually um, made it just for my ease of use uh, so I could only move the elbow independently with one specific hand because um, the elbow is really really good but all the hands there's not really one strong metal hand that I can do a bunch of different things with. And so that's why I was going to use this video where I was going to switch hands. Um, as I put it on, you know, um, there's no sensors in there. Just to show you all that. But um, very bare bones. Right. So... Um, I, I, I think that there's a lot of ignorance around arms, um, and when I say that I'm switching hands spe for a specific task, that's because um, I'll even arrange what, I, what, what workouts I do and what I do throughout the week based on not having to switch my hands to the one that activates or actuates this elbow. So, this one is very tough, but... It doesn't hold things well um, for safety reasons that um, that the way it closes is kind of like uh, just a spring. And so I tried to mow the lawn with that one. It didn't work out well. It was miserable. And it really wore out this hand. So I'm going to try using this one, which has a little bit of a wrist movement to it, which helps. But um, And I modified this um, because um, this hand, I think, was... Event was um, was actually made for um, kayaking, if I'm not mistaken, or that's what I've seen a lot of people use it for, and um, it cannot take the power or the, or the torque uh, of kayaking for, for me, um, and that's because I think it was made for below the elbow people, and below the, OP, the elbow, below the elbow people remove a lot of the tension that goes on this by moving their elbow and so me i would pop this little m2 clip off so easily that i just replaced it with a, a leather belt and then to reinforce some of the the movement i made it um this uh, m2 clip just like uh, uh, a plus on top of the leather belt which uh, doesn't break doesn't pop off but um also this contains the movement a little bit and so, when I say it's, it's functional, um, the reason it looks so unique is because all of this motion is exposed because it cuts down on weight um, not to have it enclosed so this can move freely, right? And so, the only thing that we had put on here was a, a forearm, and that was just so I could carry stuff. But I don't need the forearm on there to operate the elbow, right? 
And so this is, that, this is that hand that helps me control the elbow. And um, I did I remember I did used to have an internal. And when I say used to, I I can change this thing within a week. But um, for the purposes of the things that um, I want to do and accomplish right now, um, and try out, I um, I wanted to specifically keep one hand to operate in the elbow because the cords are actually attached to the jaws. And some people had correctly um, assumed that um, the majority of these elbows that are made are, are use either um, all proprietary materials. They either use wax cord or steel cable. And I didn't like either one of those because um, like I said before, it was really hard for me to replace. So this is just 550 cord, way tougher than both of those things. Uh, tensile wise and and I could be um, using the wrong word but whenever I say that is like, I can move this you can bend 550 cord and it not be stressed like specifically steel and then the reason I liked it better than wax is because um, steel is better than wax when it comes to let's call it um, weight um, but 550 cord is better than um, both of those, both of those different things, right? So there's wax and steel typically. I just coated 550 cord, double stranded it. And um, I do go through these a little bit, but um, I've only had to replace this one time and then I coated it. And so since I've coated it, I've only had to replace it. Um, it didn't break, but I caught it before it was gonna break. So, um, pretty, pretty tough. And it's been almost six months without a replacement and how much I use this elbow. Um, you know, that's, that's, that's pretty good, especially can compared to steel and, um, wax. So here I don't have the elbow, um, connected. And so that means that to me, that just means that, um, in layman's terms that I cannot operate it bionically and whenever i say bionically i don't mean battery powered or motored i just mean that whenever it moves or actuates up and down i'm not um actively controlling that via a cable system and i wanted to show stuff like this versus just weightlifting and shooting guns um that i think that bionic arms that are powered by things like batteries and wires and stuff like that don't do really well yet in 2024 and that's because a lot of them are um, still made out of plastic versus uh, things like knees that are um, almost all metal, just like my arm. My arm's all metal. But so whenever I do something like this with my bionic arms, I, I, I will, I'm willing to show you guys doing stuff like that bionically. But anytime you see me doing it, it's very carefully compared to using this arm. And that's because I've already broken so many prosthetics attempting stuff like this. So just the mowing the lawn, you wouldn't think that's a big deal in, um, you know, just for a regular arm, right? But bionic prosthetics um, that are operated with wires and motors and stuff like that, a lot of the parts, the weak points are plastic. And so this is uh, about like 97 degree heat, right? Just the just the vibration from the lawn mower will... will um, break the wrist. So and I'm that's why you to don't do it see until I get a do prosthetic it. team and set and ready to fix like, my prosthetic. For an example, um, it's funny because I've, I've broken them so many different ways that I already know not only how I break them, but whenever I visit and talk to other prosthetic teams, um, I'll, I'll hear from their process that they tell their own patients not to use a prosthetic in the way that I use it because you're going to risk breaking them. And that's specifically like the bionic hands and elbows because there are some tougher claws. But anything that – anytime um, specifically with upper extremities, you get to um, – if it moves the fingers and the elbow is controlled with a motor up and down – uh, they're very vulnerable, uh, especially compared to legs, because if I couldn't compare it to legs, then I don't know how I would explain to people that upper extremity prosthetics are nowhere near the level of legs, because you're seeing legs being used right now in Paris in the Olympics. Uh, mechanically and some bionic ones, um, mechanically one, are specifically for running above the knee, um, they're, they're being used right now, and you don't see arms that level. 
Um, and I know this because I've competed in things like the Warrior Games, and I was the only one with an elbow um, good enough to be able to do certain motions. So they actually had rules against me using my prosthetic, and even more so in the Olympics, uh, which is which is like um, crazy in juxtaposition to people winning uh, Olympic medals with prosthetic legs uh, below the knee and above the knee. And so to be able to just do things like work out, um, outdoor activities is why you've seen so many people um, message me or comment on here, a lot of TikTok. I mean, I I travel to the Ukraine based on all of these comments from from TikTok about people asking me about to use the arm that I have to uh, return to service because they wanted to be able to do these things that I do here um, just at the level that you know, um, they're seeing legs be used. And when I talk about the arm, I mean specifically the elbow because hands are getting very good. It's just elbows that have been left behind. Um, and so whenever I like travel to talk about the arm, it's almost always about the elbow and the socket system, the harness, and um, the things that we've done to protect the socket. I can do that too. Um, being <laughs> all you, metal on the okay. outside, to be able to do adventurous <laughs> things and not have to worry about breaking what is very vulnerable um, carbon fiber. And so I always um, talk about it when it's connected to the hand that can move the elbow because that's where I use it the most. And specialty things like um, weightlifting and stuff like that, I think that uh, for a while that's going to be something that's commonplace where people are just switching hands specifically for a specific task unless, you know, they get to a point where um, there's a hand so tough that you can lift weights with it. But uh, this hand, you know, that you see me moving the elbow with, it is very tough. It can do a lot of different things, just um, not all the things that um, a very active person is going to expect from prosthetics, Uh, specifically, you know, somebody who um, wants to return to a level of activity like um, lifting weights, you know, shooting guns, and uh, just like an adventurous person because I think that a lot of uh, prosthetics are good where they're at for people that um, are sedentary and, um, you know, are at a desk job and they're not expecting to be able to use them to do things like strength train and swim and box and mow the lawn or be used at the level that leg prosthetics are being used right now in the Paralympics for things like running and biking. So I have a goal of just getting upper extremity prosthetics to the level that leg prosthetics already are.